Hey brother. So a common theme that's been coming up a lot is the topic of self-hatred and self-loathing. That inner dialogue in your head that is ruthless, like a tyrant that lives inside of your brain. I wanna share a short clip with you from a call in the Conscious Men community. We do these calls two to three times a week and it's a place where guys can just open up, be a little bit more vulnerable, and shine a light on the dark corners of their consciousness that they've been wrestling with. This isn't a community to complain, but it is a community to open up a little bit, to figure out what parts of yourself that need healing. Self-hatred and self-loathing is something that I have struggled with a majority of my life, and it was such a revelation when I realized that that voice wasn't even me. It was almost like an entity or a past version of myself that still lived in my head. If you're looking for a community of like-minded men where you can have accountability, there's guys in there quitting pornography, getting to the best shape of their lives, learning how to cultivate courage to talk to women, overcoming all kinds of things that have been holding them back. The community is not for everybody, but if you're the kind of man who's ready to take action, tired of just the usual day-to-day -day without any sort of accountability or without any type of measurable progress and want to be surrounded by other guys striving to become the best versions of themselves, then click the link in the description. Here's the clip. So a topic that I want to start with today, it's something that I don't think I touch on enough. Um, sometimes I seem very at peace. I seem very joyful a lot of times. Benet was like, bro, you're always smiling, all these things. And which is interesting because sometimes on my videos, they get a little bit heavy and I get a little bit intense. But generally, at this stage in my life, I don't really suffer very much mentally anymore. But that's not something that happened overnight. And it's not something that I was born with by any means. So... There was this pivotal moment in my life where I became very, very aware of the voice of self-hatred and self-loathing. It had always been there, but there was never a moment of separation where I questioned it, where I really zoomed in to intricate detail and just looked at it and was like, what is this? What is this voice? And when I first initially did that, there was a period where my level of suffering actually increased quite a bit, probably like 40%. Because the self-loathing and the self-hatred, that voice, I would do something, I'd spill a drink immediately, you fucking idiot. Like, just on autopilot. I lived this way for the first 30 years of my life. I didn't question it, I didn't think anything of it, I was like... This is just being a human. What I didn't realize was what that was. It was a wounded version of me from the past that I had never given my attention to, that I've never taken the time to sit with, to fully see, to fully just be present with. The actual essence of who you are is your awareness and your presence. And the essence of that is pure love. And I know a lot of this stuff seems very woo woo. So if you're not a spiritual person, you can perceive this as, okay, well, the part of my mind that has conscious awareness, it has good intentions. It has love. My son, he's four years old. And obviously it's different if he's emotionally triggered, but his general state when he's in a neutral, healthy environment and something isn't harming him or making him feel unsafe. His neutral state is wonder and joy. And he's just smiling. He's playing with his toys. He's curious. He has wonder. That voice hasn't quite developed yet within him. But I see traces of it. I see traces of it. Sometimes there will be moments where he sort of punishes himself. And he's like, I did this thing. And I'm like, it's okay, buddy. These emotions, negative emotions, start off as indicators or adjustments that you should make. These are loving indicators where you feel these painful sensations of, I did this thing, I said these, this thing, I have this uncomfortable, painful sensation within me. 
What is that? It is there for a reason. It is a loving indicator. It's saying, hey, just like if you cut your hand, just like if you put your hand on a stove and it burns, just like these are mechanisms in place that were put in place by a higher divine intelligence that goes beyond what you could possibly imagine. And that's how our internal world works as well. Nobody teaches you these things. There is no manual for these things. You are born into this human existence and everybody is just suffering and everybody is perpetuating that suffering and identifying that suffering, making other people's suffering worse because they themselves are not at peace and not okay. When you start to heal, you start to see people the way that you see yourself. There is that, um, that Bible verse. Um, I don't identify as a Christian or anything like that, like not in a negative way. Um, I don't really identify with any religion, if I'm being honest with you. I'm not like, I'm this, I'm that. I'm just a seeker of truth. But there is a verse that says, love your neighbor as yourself. And they talk about this all the time. But what they don't put the focus on is you can't love your fucking neighbor if you don't fucking love yourself. You can to a degree. But what tends to happen is you will get exhausted. If you are able to give to other people, give of your time, give of your presence, it will drain you and you will start to like feel like an empty shell because there are divine laws. And one of those laws is the law of giving and receiving. You need to integrate both. If all you are is giving of yourself, if all you're doing is focusing on other people, and you don't know how to receive from others, and you don't know how to receive from yourself, this will put you out of balance. And then that makes that voice of self-loathing. That's why some can have a voice of self-loathing and self-hatred that's very palpable, very loud, even if they don't necessarily talk to other people that way, because they're caught in just the imbalance of only giving and not receiving. And then on the opposite end, there are people who only know how to take. They say, you know, like narcissists, all they know how to do is, is take, but they have one piece of the polarity, you know? So anyway, all that being said, this is some things I've been contemplating on. A theme has been coming up as it should, because the state of humanity is in a state of self-loathing and self-hatred, and it causes a lot of suffering. So I just wanted to open it up there. We don't have to only be on this topic, but I wanted to open that up. If anybody is going through any personal things that you want to delve into, we can go into it. I know it can be nerve wracking to be put on the spot. The part of yourself that doesn't know how to love yourself hates any kind of love that's coming from an external place genuinely because it doesn't know what to do with it. And that part of your identity can't survive if it continually starts to receive love from somebody else or something else or even from yourself. So. That's where a lot of that discomfort comes from. Um, Giorgio, go ahead, brother. As far as gaining balance and more consistency on the day to day, there was a shift that happened where essentially a few times I would feel this very deep level of suffering or shame and my initial reaction would be to medicate it or to do self-hatred, which is a weird addiction because it hurts when you're like, you piece of shit, but it does give you this weird sense of comfort in a way. So there was an awareness of like, I'm strangely addicted to verbally and emotionally abusing myself. This is interesting. The first time that I started to feel a very intense sensation like that and I instead of reacting I sat down closed my eyes began to, to breathe and go deeper into that feeling and really look at it and there was a slight shift that happened and then I almost got into more of a habit of doing that and I almost became excited almost like that's where the weird self-improvement side of things comes in where I would almost view it as like a challenge. I'd be like, wow, this is a very intense, hateful dialogue that's going on within me right now. 
And I almost became curious. I'm like, let me sit with this and go deeper into it and see what happens. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm, I'm still here. I'm okay. I feel a little bit lighter. And then I continue to do that. So I'm going to give you guys actually a practice. Okay. If you don't meditate, if you don't have a meditation practice, you can be very intentional about it. Literally for two minutes a day, sit down, close your eyes. And this works, especially if you have very intense self-hatred. You sit down, you close your eyes. You take deep breaths. And then once you're kind of in a more relaxed state, within your own heart and within your own mind, you say, I love you. You are worthy of love. I see you. And then shut up and listen to the reaction. The inner voice is going to be like, fuck you, piece of shit. You don't know anything. Sit there, listen to it, hear it out. And then I want you to visualize that voice coming from a little kid version of you. Maybe like a 10-year-old version of you or whatever past version of you has been hurt the most, has experienced the most feelings of abandonment, the most feelings of neglect, the most feelings of not being seen, that younger version of yourself. And hear those words coming out of the mouth of that past version of yourself. Look at him. Be present with him. After he's done saying all that, again, you can say, I see you. I love you. You are worthy of love. And then guess what's going to happen? He's going to freak the fuck out even more. And this is going to be an ongoing thing. And what you're going to be is the calm, loving, observing presence, watching this wounded entity inside of you, which is a past version of yourself that has never been healed. And you're going to show up either every day, if you can, because this can be emotionally exhausting, depending on where you're at in life or every other day or three times a week, however much that you can manage. And this is a form of loving discipline, which you can also call devotion. Because that's what that is. Devotion is like discipline from a place of love. And if you fucking hate yourself and you're here in this community, there is a part of you that is very loving in, in spite of that self-hatred. And you can't always see it. You can't always see that side of yourself. And so this is what I would tell myself if I could. Once I started doing these practices and I became more and more curious about it, I started to actually weirdly enjoy the challenge. I'd almost be like, oh, negative sensations of hatred and suffering within me. What is this trying to tell me? What do I need to give my attention to right now? And then I would sit down. I would go deeper into it. Sometimes I would feel numb. Sometimes I would literally find myself on a fetal position on the floor, weeping like a child. You never know what's going to come to the surface, if anything. But this is why we call this work. And it's easy, almost like a weightlifter who's been lifting for five years and they've made gains and it's like they just enjoy working out. Sometimes you forget the work that went into it because now you're just sort of on autopilot and you're just enjoying the benefits and you don't really think about it anymore. But when I go back and I think about these, these processes and the dark states that I was in, because suffering is a gift in a lot of ways. None of us would be doing this work if we had never come face to face with suffering and loss and grief and self-hatred. So that's why when I say there's love even in the darkness... Those things are there to push us to the true essence of who we are. And it's very easy to go your entire lifetime and avoid it. It's very easy because that part of our ego wants to stay alive. And the consistent showing up with devotion and love and presence will eventually kill that part of you. And it's painful and it doesn't want to die. Does that answer your question a little bit, Giorgio? <laughs>
So I hope you found some value in that short little clip. If you want to be a part of those types of conversations and consider joining the Conscious Men community, you'd be amazed what surrounding yourself with high quality men will do for your life. We delve pretty deep every single week. There's also a fitness video course in there that outlines everything I've learned in the last 15 years when it comes to health, fitness, and getting into amazing shape. I charge quite a bit for one-on-one -on -one sessions just because my time is very short. So this is kind of a hack to have access to me for a fraction of the cost and you not only have access to me, but a whole group of incredible guys. I've been amazed at the quality of men that this community has attracted so far. We're all learning and growing together. So if you're starting to grow in your awareness and consciousness, and you want to continue to grow with your spirituality, your emotional health, your physical health, then I would encourage you to check it out. You are loved, you matter, and you've barely scratched the surface of what you're capable of. I'll talk to you soon.